Epic Games tends to act really weird when it comes to giving into community requests. The last hotfix patch was reserved on social media for vaulting the combat shotgun and making more adjustments to the brutes. Both of those are related to balance in the game, but what about features? Hmm. What about the small things that can improve our quality of life while playing? Well, there are definitely a lot of brought up suggestions that Epic should be looking to add. What's going on, guys? Hey, it is your guy. Yeah, your friend, Keith Allen. Hey, I'm your number one fan. I want you to do not only great in Fortnite, but also great in life, all right? I'm here for you guys. Connect with me when you can on my Instagram. I would love to hear from you. Today, we're gonna be going over five commonly requested features Epic Games needs to add to Fortnite. The community has been asking for these features to be implemented for a while now. In some cases, for over a year. Oh my goodness, that sounds like eternity. Most of these features are commonplace in other games, and it's a little disappointing to see Fortnite fall behind in these areas. With the current state of the game being the way it is, these additions could greatly improve the experience for a lot of players, including myself. But before we jump right into it, hey, you know the rule. Click the link in the description to get access to our pro coaching system, Instapro. Play with some of the best players around and take your game to the next level. Also, hammer that like button if you enjoyed this video. It feels as if, every so often, a new mode gets made in creative. Right now, we have Zone Wars, Turtle Wars, Prop Hunt, 1v1s, Parkour, Death Runs, and so many more that are played by the community every single day. Who knows how many more modes are going to be created in the future? But one glaring problem is that there is still no official way to find groups to play these modes with. You either need to use third-party services like Discord or rely on joining Playground with Phil on, which isn't all that great either. With how many different custom game modes there are in creative, it sure would be nice to be able just to browse and just join open lobbies. Wouldn't that be great? A dream. If a server browser were to be added, we would be able to just easily search for whichever specific mode we felt like playing that day. How cool would it be if you could just sort the lobbies out there by certain details like weapons, the map being played, skill level, and even game type? It would just make finding the right game a breeze and would open the doors to those who were just unaware that certain modes even existed at all. All these modes would just end up being so much more accessible to the community. The good news is that our prayers might be answered soon. Thank you, God. When asked in a recent MAA if we could get an in-game browser for creative, the team at Epic responded by saying that they were working towards improving discovery of games. How neat is that? Even if it's not a detailed server browser, at least it's something that makes finding the right lobby easier. So far, the creative team has been really good at responding to requests and giving the community what they wanted. So hopefully, when they say they're working on improving the discovery of games, we can expect to see something like a server browser to be added soon. If Fortnite was one of the first shooters you've ever played, you may have never thought about customizing your crosshair. But for those of us who come from other games like CSGO or Overwatch, crosshair customization was something that was valued dearly. Being able to change the way our crosshair looks has been a staple in shooter games almost since their inception. The size, the shape, color, even transparency, and whether it moves are all ways that crosshairs can be customized to our preferences. And for many players, being able to make those changes can have a positive impact on how they aim. We're not saying that the current crosshairs are bad or anything like that. They do a good job of showing the effect of bloom and whether or not we have first shot accuracy ready. But if crosshair options are added, those default settings are not going to go away or anything. We just have more play styles available to use depending on our preferences. For instance, maybe a player doesn't like how the crosshair fades away during a reload or weapon swap. Well, being able to turn it off would be a nice option, wouldn't it? So that you could always just see your crosshair no matter what. Or what about how first shot accuracy closes the crosshair completely? A newer player might prefer the default just so that they can just get used to how the mechanic works. But more experienced players may prefer something that has more room in the middle. For no crosshair customization settings to have been added yet, it's kind of sad. While we don't even know the exact challenges behind Epic adding a feature like this, the fact that they're a norm in pretty much every shooter out there shows that they probably wouldn't be too difficult. Maybe Epic just doesn't feel that they're all that important. Okay, maybe that's just it. Or maybe most players wouldn't change anything and Epic just feels that it was a waste of resources. If crosshair customization was added, what would be the first thing you would change? Or would you stick with the defaults? Let us know what you think in the comments. So, I'm sure we've all had one of these moments. We go to editor structure, right? But because we're holding a different build piece, it tries to pre-edit that instead of editing the structure we're looking at. How annoying is that? It messes with the flow of the building and editing and even can be the cause of deaths or even miskills. Well, this whole issue could be avoided if we just had an option to disable pre-editing. The pre-edit function where you can just edit the structure you want to place in advance is rarely used. 
For most players, it ends up being more disruptive than beneficial. You can currently avoid this issue by either selecting a weapon or selecting the piece you want to edit in build mode. But constantly swapping to a weapon for every edit isn't ideal. If you take time to swap to weapons, which may slow down the speed at which you build and pull off edits, not being in build mode also shortens the range at which you can edit from, which again slows down editing speeds. While pre-editing interrupts our gameplay often, it definitely still has some uses. Just look at how Mongrel pre-edited his stairs and wall before pushing this player. Wow, it actually ends up being very useful when getting him the quick kill. Basically, he shifted the time that would be used up by editing to before the fight even starts. That gave his opponent less time to react and made the kill easier to get. The fact that pre-edit still has some legitimate uses means that an option to disable it would be the best solution. Instead, an option to disable it as well as a new separate keybind for it would be ideal. Controller players who dislike pre-edit can turn it off without having to worry about their limited keypad space. Then with a separate binding, keyboard and mouse players can continue to use pre-edits as Mongo did there without unintentionally bringing it up in a build battle. So back in May, Epic Games acknowledged this issue and said that they were actively considering adding an option to disable pre-edits. Well, it's been over three months since then and they haven't updated us at all. They must have thought it wasn't too important or something, who knows. But in reality, it's affecting players and their ability to edit. A feature almost no one uses is still ruining games. Hopefully one day we get this option added so that we don't have to deal with pre-edits getting in the way. I don't know about you, but I think I'm gonna ask Santa Claus to do this. I've been a good boy this year. Yes, Santa's real, what kind of question is that? So another commonly requested feature is to create new queues and LTMs for popular game modes. For example, two creative game modes see a lot of play, Storm Wars and 1v1s. Players love Storm Wars because it's a quick and stress-free way of just practicing competitive in-games. 1v1s can be a ton of fun and also provides great build battle experience. So why are there no good ways to find a full lobby that wants to play these? Hmm. While a server browser could also help ease the finding of these games, the point is, is that these two modes are just way more popular than most others. They've been the most popular custom mode games for a while now. With how many players like these modes, it's just a shame there isn't an easy way to queue up. The modes being officially supported would make these things much simpler for players, and they won't have to worry about getting updated map codes every time a change is made. The good news is that Epic did say that they were looking at supporting popular modes like this, but that was over three months ago. Where are you, Epic? I can't find you. The modes have only gotten more popular, yet they still haven't gotten their spot on the mode selection screen. Hmm. Hopefully, Epic is just working out the kinks. All right, let's just, let's just think that. They're just working out the kinks. They're working, they're busy. And we can just start queuing for more 1v1s and Storm Wars without having to use complicated third-party services. Lastly, my friends, the field of view slider easily, the most requested feature ever since Stretch Revolutions got nerfed. If you've been living under a rock and are unaware of what a FOV slider would do, here's a solid concept from Reddit user LudicPitch198 that shows how much more vision you have with a higher FOV. Currently, Fortnite uses an 80 degree field of view that can't be changed. PC players use to be able to increase it by setting their game to a custom stress resolution. A majority of pro players and streamers started using these custom resolutions since being able to see more stuff on your screen is obviously better. With it, you can potentially spot players, traps, or really anything that otherwise would appear off screen. Epic eventually changed how their game worked with custom resolutions and essentially banned increasing vertical FOV in all game modes. They had the right idea for doing this, they did. Console players didn't have the option to change to a custom resolution and therefore didn't have the access to higher FOVs. Plus, it required a good amount of knowledge to set up and put anybody who didn't use it to an advantage. Where Epic's decision making took a controversial turn, in my opinion, was when they announced they had no intention to add an in-game FOV option. They claimed that fundamentally, they don't like settings which can give players a significant advantage. Then, they went on to explain even a few more reasons why allowing for different FOVs would be harmful, even as far as saying it'll cause motion sickness, which it is true in some cases. But the whole point of the slider is to give players an option to choose what they like. If they want to stick with the current FOV for whatever reasons, they can. That's the beauty of it being an option. FOV sliders are pretty common in other games, and they aren't really any issues that arise from those games having them. Even more, Fortnite's default FOV is particularly low for how important vision is. In other games like CSGO, most of the action happens at even horizontal levels. But in Fortnite, players can build above you or end up below you. And with cases like that, vertical field of view ends up being pretty important. Even just being able to increase it by 10 or 20 degrees would be a massive improvement over the current setting. 
Even though it's been months since Epic released their statement on the matter, a FOV slider is still the most requested feature. There are Reddit threads made daily on the topic. Even Poach from Team Liquid changed his Twitter name recently to help get back the discussion. Although Epic Games brought up some good points as to why they won't add a slider, we think that the benefits greatly outweighs the cost. In the end, giving players the freedom to just set up their game how they want brings the best out of them, and whether you compete or are just a spectator isn't the best what we want to see. Fortnite is a fantastic game, but the glaring lack of features makes it far from perfect. And in our opinion, Epic really needs to just start listening more to his community. What about you? What do you think? It's not to say that the player base is always right, but you know, the, the mind of the people generally has a good idea of what works and what doesn't work. Ultimately, we just care about this game and we want the best for it. We know there's definitely a few more features that could have made this list, so let us know in the comments what features you desperately want Epic to add, or even what features you might want to see removed from the game. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Once again, this is your guy. That's right, your friend, Keith Allen. I'm your number one fan, and I want you to connect with me right now on my Instagram. I would love to hear from you, and stay tuned for more videos coming out. And be sure to subscribe and like this video if you enjoyed what you watched. And be sure to leave any ideas you have for Pro Guys in the comments. The feedback is always appreciated. Thanks for watching.